voice of the Dolphins, Barry Milligan. And Barry, uh, an exciting weekend now that we finally have dried out from uh, the trip down to Lake <laughs> Wales. Uh, a big win for the Dolphins, 40-24 over Weber International. What were your thoughts uh, uh, from the opening game? Well, any time you, you win the opener, you know, with all the nerves, the anxiety, the butterflies, new players, injuries that we had. Gee whiz, there were, there were so many elements there, and obviously not all of them positive for the guys to have to deal with. So, I mean, bottom line, I thought the composure was excellent to be able to come out and be very efficient offensively early in the ball game and take the early lead. As we know historically, Jacksonville under Coach Kerwin Bell has been very, very good when we score first. Absolutely. We were able to do that. And I thought, uh, you know, as well as Weber played, and Weber played a heck of a lot better than that team played uh, a year ago when we handled them very easily on homecoming. This was a very solid win for this team. An impressive outing from Josh Philpart, the sophomore in his first game out, uh, uh, really a coming out party. Six catches, 195 yards, two touchdowns. That's as impressive a debut as you're going to have for a season. Well, it really is, you know, and he's fulfilling expectations. We've been hearing about this young man since he walked onto this campus. How, you know, again, Coach Bell has had some special things to say about a handful of players. You know, Josh McGregor was one of those. He always talks about Josh having the it factor. Whatever it is, right. Josh has it. Rudolph Small was one of those guys. Sean Lewis has emerged as one of those guys. He's talked about Bill Park in that same exact tone, saying that this guy has a chance to rewrite the record books. And, yeah, he does. When we saw that, uh, actually, on the field with one of the top five receiving days in the history of the program and a, a kid that just seems to – be able to find those scenes, runs good routes, very disciplined. And again, credit to Ernie Mills, you know, the wide receivers coach that, you know, he Ernie has said, you know, these guys are paying attention. If, if I can teach them, if they will listen to me, I can teach them. And he's doing a very good job in Phil Park. Boy, put it into action on game day. Looking at the defense, a very good defensive performance for a lot of guys in new roles. We had four starters out, Yeah, had to put a lot of guys in new roles. Lane McCombs, he's played middle linebacker for a year. Right. He's got shipped to a strong side linebacker. Uh, Kali Fafita, the freshman defensive lineman, gets thrust into the starting role. Lisa McDougal make hit, makes his first career start. So you've got a, a group of guys who come in and uh, made a lot of new play, had a lot of different roles that they had to add that's right, and we saw, I mean, a lot of guys, you know, freshmen and sophomores even, you know, cycling in there that we expected to see, but you don't know what to expect in terms of what we're going to get out of them once they get on the field. But, you know, again, Sean Lewis anchoring the defensive line. I mean, just was, was a terror up there for much of the day. And credit, too, once Lane McCone shifted to the strong side, here's Alan Fennell, another guy that's played a lot of football, you know, older brother of, of Jojo Fennell, stepped right into that middle linebacker spot with a ton of experience, made a lot of plays. 12 tackles yep. in the game. Led the team in tackles, was around the football a lot. The secondary, a little bit inexperienced, obviously. We were without our preseason All-American, you know, Coach Wood out there, who's like a coach Absolutely. on the field. You know, we, we really missed his play and leadership on the field. But again, it was, uh, you know, a, a team that, or a unit rather, that Joel made huge stands when it needed to. Got a three and out when we really needed to. Stood up when when it needed to most to prevent that game from being closer than it was. Now let's look ahead to Sanford. Last year was Appalachian State, the top ranked <laughs> team in the country. Right. This year, Sanford, uh, obviously they're not the best team in the Southern Conference, but they're sure not the worst team. They're uh, picked to finish in the middle of the pack uh, among a, a group of teams that may have a shot at the playoffs at the end of the season. This is kind of the game that Coach Bell wants every year. Right. It's, a, it's that game where That's you right. test yourself against a, one of the teams that thinks that they're going to be in the top 25. Your thoughts right now, I mean, I, I'm excited about it because it's a great opportunity for this football program to take for to take that next step. We took the first step last year by winning the league. Now you've got a chance of taking that next step and making a statement national. Right. Well, it's an interesting scenario, of course, you think about last week. All right, here's Jacksonville, a 1AA opponent for Weber International, an NAIA school. We really felt like, I really felt like Weber played one of the best games that, that it can play. I mean, Absolutely. there's talent on that team, but 
This is an NAIA school that was jacked up to play, and I thought played up a little bit. You look at that same analogy last week. Samford comes to Orlando, takes on a UCF team that's had some terrific games over the last couple of years. And really, UCF, I mean, you look at all of the press clippings and all of the reviews from that game, I mean, the, the, the kind of the feeling was UCF escaped with a four-point win over Samford. We just, I think, have to hope a little bit that Samford was playing up, a little extra jacked up for that game. But, you know, Joel, there's, there are new facilities at Samford. There's kind of a rejuvenated excitement, and everybody gets excited about opening day at home. And we are the opponent for the home opener. Right? And, you know, again, I, I think the Bulldogs are going to be loaded up a little bit despite the fact that they're playing down on paper. You know, but, yeah. but you have to hope, again, our kids respond the way we did at App State. We go in and play excited. We go in, you know, running around and, and showing a ton of energy. And, and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to equal, if not surpass, the energy of the Bulldogs. It'll be interesting to see that the, I, I'm, I'm excited to see the defense finally get together out there. That's as true. Everybody uh, has been cleared to play this week. Uh, Jason Wood getting him back going to be huge. Uh, Rolando Finez on the defensive line. That's, That's right. That's going to be huge. Will Perry, we didn't see Old Spice out there. Right. Uh, so it'll be exciting to see this group get uh, get back on the field. We'll be hearing more from you uh, on Saturday on game day. The Bono's pregame show airs at 6.30 Eastern time. Barry and I will be calling the action live from Birmingham. We look forward to talking to you then on Saturday. For now, this is Joel Lamb and Barry Milligan on JUDolphins.com.